Uh, I was so impressed with how they came back today. Um, I've been saying it about three or four weeks in a row, but not, not only would say our best Monday ever by far, it's probably our best overall practice of the year. So yeah, I told the guys after practice, says a lot about who they are to respond that way. This guy, Sean, Sean probably stole my thunder because I was going to ask you how much of a concern is it to you, the mental aspect of it now after guys are 0-6 and 10 kind of minutes on the loss like they did. Yeah, you know, I was worried about it on Sunday and this morning before they got here, and um, I was shocked at how, how for, for the last three weeks, sometimes I wish people could see inside the walls and see how good the the culture is right now and how much it's turned and how much better it is and how much the guys are banding together. The, the one concern I have, as great as it was today, it was our best practice ever. The one concern I have is I don't want the guys to get used to losing and be okay with it. And I know the vast majority of our team isn't, but um, I don't want them to get comfortable with it either. So that's the one concern I have, but that, that's far outweighed by um, how the guys came back to work today with uh, with an attitude and a smile on their face and went to work. Oh, there's a bunch of guys. Uh, the challenge last week was make the one or two plays you haven't ever made before that are going to put us over the top. And there was a bunch of those plays. Um, you know, I watch offense more than defense, but Adrian did some good things. JD keeps stepping up. Um, Devine's running like a champ. Maurice is starting to become what we know he's going to be. Stanley fights every game. Uh, Jack Stoll's getting better. The other two tight ends are getting better. Um, Jaime gets better every week. Uh, Farniok's playing his butt off. Uh, Bo Wilson coming in has given us a spark. Um, the other two linemen have improved every week. So uh, offensively, we left a lot on the table. If you look at that game, we left a lot on the table of stuff that was there that we didn't take advantage of. and. A uh, little mistake here and there, and that's been kind of consistent, uh, but it's getting better. And there's a lot of guys making plays. Uh, we came up one short, one play short. Scott, I want to follow up on what you said about uh, making sure that you guys don't get used to losing and be okay with it. Is that something that, as a coach, you can see happening with your guys, or is that something that you don't have a clue if they become used to it? <coughs> well, he, human nature, I, the, the one thing I told them, this morning, we have a team meeting every Monday morning, and um, I told them I'm so glad I'm their coach that um, that I hope they can recognize how much improvement they've made and how far they've come, not just on the field, but everywhere. Um, but the one, the one question I had is that you, you get in a situation like that where you're up 10 with four minutes or up seven with um, a minute, whatever, left and 99 yards to go, or even up seven at the beginning of the game. And at that point, you have to finish it. You, you have to play right then um, to end it right then. And when you get up 14 with four minutes left or seven or 10 or 14, seven, um, we preach play with the desire to excel and no fear of failure. And I didn't ask anybody to answer, but I kind of wanted them to think about it. at that point, were you thinking about, I'm going to go finish this? Or were you kind of in the back of your mind thinking, oh, no? Here we go again. Um, if I'm sure there were some guys like that. And even if it wasn't the majority of what they were thinking, it was probably in the back of their head, and naturally so. They haven't won in a while. But we need to get over that hurdle as a, as a group. And um, if, if you expect to win and count on winning and you know you're going to win, um, as coaches and players, we need to find a way to win that one. Uh, you know, I've watched their defense. I haven't had a chance to look at offense yet. <coughs> defense plays really hard. Um, they fly around to the ball. They're, they run and hit. Um, very similar to the team we just played. Um, not schematically, but similar to Wisconsin from that standpoint. Um, you know, these guys, it, it's funny. I, I didn't know much about this league, but on our half, um, you know, that. There's not a ton of difference between the teams that we've seen in our half so far. Um, they're all good teams, and uh, they're all games we can win if we play really well, and games teams that'll beat us if we don't play well. What else have you learned about the league since you since you returned? It's just been four games. I know it's not a lot, but what what do you think um, marks this this league thus far in your tenure? 
I, I think that the level of the league, top to bottom, um, some of the other leagues I've been in, there's some really good teams, and then there's some games where you can play less than your best and win. Um, certainly haven't seen all the teams in this league, but I haven't seen one like that yet. So you need to be at your best week in, week out when you're playing a nine-game schedule in this league, uh, and anybody can beat you. Uh, you, need, you need to be a cut above to, to think that you're going to win the majority or all those. And, um, you know, we haven't faced everybody yet, but I'm impressed with the depth of this league. Yeah, it, it's funny how the story writes itself based on, in that case, the last four minutes or one minute and whatever. Because we make one more play, and the, the story is how Nebraska looks different. Did we turn the corner? Um, instead, the story is epic collapse and worst record ever. And um, and it, it it writes itself based on the result. That's the way it should be. We're in a competitive business. But... Um, I mean, we were one play away at the end of that game in about 20 different, on 20 different plays from having some really good things said and some excitement. And um, I want the guys to take that out of that. And we certainly have played well enough several times to win games. Um, haven't caught a lot of breaks, and it just hasn't happened, but it will. Well, I learned a long time ago when I was here not to pay any attention to what's outside. What's outside is outside noise to the people in this building. Um, all we can do is put our head down and keep getting better. And that's what we've done, and that's what we'll continue to do. What I will say is I haven't come across a fan personally that has said anything negative. Um, those fans up there in Chicago were incredible. Uh, they were supportive before the game. They were supportive at encur encouraging after the game. Um, that's what Nebraska fans are all about. And um, I said it, I think, on the radio show afterwards. I, I can't tell you how appreciative I am of those people that are behind us. Um, I hope a lot of those people see the progress we're making. We had a lot of work to do and the progress we're making. Uh, but it isn't where we want to be right now. But just wait and see. After you look at the film, would you guys have played Nagel differently um, now that you know what you know? No, he's a, he's a good player. We he beat us. Um, Northwestern beat us, but he had a lot to do with it. I went back and watched the entire defensive game on my own, and then with Coach Shenander again. Um, I think we had him doubled on twenty five ish snaps in that game. Um, what's crazy about that game is up until I think four minutes gone in the fourth quarter, our defense had given up seven points, and uh, after that, the bottom fell out. And we got to be able to finish that. But we were in zone coverage. We were in blitzes. We were in man. We doubled him a bunch. Uh, we doubled him and lost leverage. And he made a couple plays when we had two guys on him. Um, so so I, don't, I don't think it was what we were in on defense. It's just playing it better. And that's on us and, as coaches and, and the kids to make sure that they're using the techniques that we've taught them. Um, that's really what happened watching it. Um, Pressing when you're not supposed to press, and uh, him beating you at the line, and having the wrong leverage. Um, we got lined up wrong once on a fourth and ten. Uh, little things like that, and and that kid was good enough to take advantage of it. Scott, how much did you have during the game with the defense, or did you just leave it there? You know, I'm over on their side of the headset some when I think I need to be, but as a play caller on offense. Most of the time that our defense is on the field, uh, I'm talking to the guys on offense about what we want to get to in the next series. Even that last series, I was I was over there some. If Coach Ander needs anything from me, um, do you want to come after him here? Do you want to play off here? Uh, he comes and asks me or asks me on the headset if I'm over. Uh, but even on that last drive, you know, I had to be prepared to get us in the best plays that I could for overtime. So. Um, that's the way we've done it. It's worked. Uh, it will work again. Uh, 
as a head coach, I can't I can't be the head coach and manage the game, calling offense and be involved in defense. That I won't get any sleep. Uh, that's just too much, and there's not a coach in the country that does that. I have really good assistants. They've done the job before. They're doing a good job. They're going to get it right. We need we need guys to, to be better at pass rushing. Um, we need to hit blitzes a little crisper. There's a few technique things and that that aren't quite there. And that that's what watching the co- game with Coach Shenander that I saw more than anything. It, we didn't have I said to Sam that we didn't have a lot of busts Saturday. And I do apologize to you because at the end of the game it looked a little like we were tired. I don't think that's a conditioning thing. I think it's maybe a little bit of a lack of depth thing. You know, a couple of our linebackers played 80, 85 snaps in that game. Um, I don't think they were gassed, but they weren't, didn't quite look as quick as they did in the first quarter. Um, some of the technique isn't where we want it. Uh, we're not breaking on enough balls in zone coverage. Um, we're not down in a good stance to when the quarterback throws one way to drive on it and get three hats to the ball. Maybe our pass rushing technique. And honestly, it, it, I don't want to sound like an excuse. That's kind of first year stuff that you don't get to dial in the uh, basics and the techniques quite as much as you're in a hurry to get everything in. And we're improving big time on offense with our techniques and with some of the basics as we go through it. So is the defense. But some of that stuff's just not quite there. And when the margin's that much, uh, being in exactly the right spot with the exactly right technique makes a difference. And we're going to go back to some of those fundamentals as much as we can afford to as we're trying to get game plans into the, into week by week uh, adjustment for other teams. Scott, uh, you know, being, being on the sets, you guys need to get six wins to, to get more eligible. Is that carrot really difficult to get probably at this point? Is it just winning a game kind of the thing right now for, for your guys or, you know, the, the, the long-term goal for this season, with that being way out there, I guess, kind of how do you, uh, how do they kind of approach this second half? Uh, I don't know about the team for sure because I can't look into their minds, but winning a game is, that's the carrot for me right now. It needs to happen. Um, yeah, I said at the beginning of the season, I got asked a hundred times, what's a, what's a good result this year? What's a good record? How many games do you want to win? And my answer then was the same as it is now. We got to get better day by day. Um, we had a lot to fix, a lot to do, a lot to install. Um, there's no doubt watching the last three weeks how much better we've gotten. Um, really, since that Michigan game, it's really improved day by day and week by week. And uh, it breaks my heart for these guys that it hasn't led to a slash in the wind column yet. Um, so we're not going to ever look forward to what bowl game or a bowl game. Uh, if we take care of day by day, then I've said it before season say it now, we'll end up in good place um, in the not very distant future. But we can't change that uh, thinking right now. We can't change that message to the players right now. Um, and they're responding. Uh, today's the best practice we've had since I've been at the university. How do you rep uh, Noah Vegel now? Does he go up with the twos and the threes? And with his situation, you try to get him a couple games to take advantage of the redshirt rule this year? Yeah, uh, I, I think Noah uh, could make us better. Uh, I wish we'd got that ruling early. Um, on top of everything else, he's the most familiar with our scheme of anybody on campus. Um, we're definitely not going to burn a year with him if we can help it. So, and in fact, we're not. Uh, but he's good enough to be on the field for us. So if there's opportunities to get him in for four games, uh, I'd love to see that happen for him. Did you ever get an explanation on why that took five games in to get that decision? Yeah, I got an explanation. I, and it wasn't the NCAA's fault. I'd rather not comment on it farther than that. This is a small thing. But on that false start in the overtime, uh, Adrian called for the ball. No, the the ball was supposed to come, and I didn't know it, and I don't know if it's true or not. Adrian said the music was still playing, and I don't know if that had anything to do with it or not. That's not supposed to happen. Again, I don't even know if that's the case or not. 
Um, we've had a couple of those at the wrong times this year. We had one in the uh, Colorado game on our last drive where we just didn't snap the ball. Um, our quarterbacks have to be louder. Our centers have to be locked in. And um, we can't make mistakes like that, particularly late. Um, you know, that's third and one. We probably got two downs to get a half a yard, back it up and get five again and have a, a down to get half a yard. And, and then we had our first bad snap in a couple of weeks. So just, you know, I, I feel bad for the guys because those things just seem to keep happening to us, particularly at the wrong time. Uh, but hey, when the chips are down and when the game's on the line, we need to be at our best. And we haven't exactly done that yet. Yeah, I, you know, there's a couple positions where we're getting really thin. Um, inside linebacker is one of them. Um, outside, we're still pretty healthy. The minute Fur gets back to 100%, uh, but it, it's it's all hands on deck. And if somebody has four four games to play, we're going to do our best to use the personnel as well as we can. One or two more, please. What do you know about PJ Fleck and just kind of his background? I don't know a lot about PJ other than running into him at uh, at uh, the the coaches' events for the Big Ten, and um, I know he did a great job where he was before. And um, judging by what I see on tape, he's doing a really good job where he is. So defensively, what, what can you point to? Maybe that's been the, what part of that unit has shown the most improvement. Uh, you know, the lack of busts in the game um, points to to guys being dialed in better to what they're supposed to be doing. Now, we still had some things that just make you scratch your head. And it, you know, I, we gave up too many yards, but I'm, I'm spitballing and guessing because I don't know the exact stats, but I bet you 200 of those yards were on eight plays where we just weren't lined up right, didn't play the technique right, gave up a leverage that we were supposed to, weren't supposed to give up, th things like that. and. Um, we're going to get it fixed. You know, I don't know if it's guys making stuff up and not doing it the way they're taught or if you know, we're going to keep teaching it better and make sure they do it the right way. But um, you know, I even went over the stats with Coach Janander, and I think we had six base defensive calls, and they average anywhere, Northwestern average anywhere from 0.5 to 3.3 yards per play on those calls. Um, again, the narrative wrote itself at the end of the game because with four minutes gone or whatever in the fourth quarter, Northwestern's offense has scored seven points. And um, then some of those mistakes and errors happen. And again, they happened at exactly when they couldn't happen. And those are habits we have to break. So, have you seen the, uh, you know, you got the list, the game? If so, what are your thoughts? I have not seen them. I've heard about them. Um, anything to give us a little mojo right now, I'm all for. So <laughs> I hope they look good. No, I don't think it looks real good for CJ. Um, gosh, it's heartbreaking. He, you know, he's a guy that we kept bringing along and thinking that he can help us at that position. And um, he was just standing around a, a pile, uh, and a guy kind of whiffed on a tackle and rolled into his knee. And uh, I'm not sure if we know for sure yet, but it doesn't look really good for the rest of this year. Uh, well, Lamar's, you know, one of the guys that I think has made significant improvement. Um, still like to see him go make some great plays, but uh, he's doing things the right way now. Uh, he's been a good teammate, and uh, he's got enough talent to be a really good player if he keeps on that track.